Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our shop menu by adding some different elements, such as a title, some different image labels, and also some buy buttons. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. Okay, so in the last video, we set up a blank frame with a close button up in the corner here, so that when the player walks up to the shop, it opens up the menu. And then whenever the player clicks the X over here, it'll close this menu. So what we're going to be adding today are the different items you see inside this frame now. So we'll have some type of shop menu, maybe a title or something like that. We're going to add some different image labels for the different items we're selling. And then down below those image labels, we're going to add buy buttons. So the way you want to do this is you're going to add all these items underneath your frame. Starting up top here is a text label. And the way you can add that is go up to your frame, click on the plus sign, and then click on text label. And then down here in the properties of the text label, there's a whole bunch of different options that you can use to customize the look of your text label. For example, you can change the background color. You can give it a border if you want to. And down here a little bit farther under the text section, you can change stuff like the text that appears on the label, the font style, and also the text size. So just go ahead and spend a few minutes and take a look at some of these. Next are image labels, which you can add the same way that we did for the text label, by going up to the frame, clicking on the plus sign, and then clicking on image label. When you first insert the image label, it's not going to have a picture, but we're going to take a look in just a second how you can add a picture to it. Finally, down here at the bottom are the buy buttons, and these are text buttons, and you can add those the same way we did before by going up to the frame, clicking on the plus sign, and then clicking on text button. And now if we try it out in the game, once we approach the shop, then we have this new menu with all our new elements in it. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can add the images onto our image labels. So what I'm going to do first is just hide the UI elements so I have room to work. Next, we're going to take a look at the tools that you want to sell in your shop. For this example, I just chose a green ball, a yellow brick, and a blue cylinder. And what we need to do is get an image of each of our tools. So the way I did this is I used the snipping tool. So this comes with Windows, and there's probably something similar for Mac as well. Once you have the snipping tool up, then you can just take an image of each one. And then go ahead and save it. So for this one, I call this one ball. And then you want to do the same thing for the other tools. So we'll take an image of this one. And then go ahead and save it. This one I labeled block. And then finally for the last one. For this one, I labeled it cylinder. But the names of this doesn't really matter, as long as you remember it for the next step. So after you take the images of all your different tools, then you need to upload it onto the image label. What you need to do first before you can upload images into your game is make sure that your game is published. After your game is published, then let's go ahead and start adding the images to our labels. So we're going to start with the first label here. And the process is we're going to start by clicking on our image label. And then down here under the image section, we're going to be looking for the part that says image. And then we're going to click here. And then to add a new image, you're just going to click on this button down here. You'll press choose file. Then you'll select whatever image corresponds to the tool. After that, you'll press Create. And once you do that, you see that it uploaded the image onto the image label. And then you would just do the same thing for each of your other image labels. There are a couple things you might want to take a look at inside of the properties for these. And it corresponds to how it sizes the image inside of the label. You may want to take a look down here under Scale Type and select the option that works best for your picture. And once you do that, then you have images for all the items in your shop. Okay, so next we're going to start making things happen when the user clicks the Buy button. And the first thing we're going to make happen is just printing off a statement down the output. So when I press the Buy button, it'll say Bought Item 1, Bought Item 2, and then Bought Item 3. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at our script and see what we have to add to make this work. Okay, so this is the script that we had last time. And up at the top here are just references for some different items, such as the frame the open part, which is the part that the player touches to open the menu. We also have a reference for the close button, which is that X up in the top right hand corner. And then down here we have a couple different functions. This first function opens up the shop when the player touches the part. The second function down here closes the shop whenever the player clicks on the X. And down here at the bottom are the different events that connect to these different functions. What we're going to add first is more variables to serve as references for the different items we added into our menu. So let's go ahead and start by saying local by underscore one and this is going to be equal to script dot parent dot by one 
So this is a reference for the first buy button. So whatever you called your first buy button, go ahead and put that here. Okay, we're going to be doing that for the other buy buttons. So rather than retype that, let's just go ahead and copy and paste and make a few changes. So we'll do buy underscore two and three. And then we'll change this one to number two and number three. Okay, so next down here at the bottom, we'll add some more events. So what we're going to say is buy underscore one dot mouse button one click. And then we're going to be connecting this to a function. For now, though, we're going to leave it blank until we write the function. So what we're going to do for this function, we're going to say local function. And we'll name this function by item one. What we're going to do inside this function is just say print and then bought item one. What we have to do now is link our function to the click event. And we can do that by just putting the name of the function inside the parentheses down here. Let's go ahead and copy this two more times for the other buttons. So this will be number two and number three. And then we'll change this one to number two and number three. And then we'll just copy this function two more times. Number two and number three. And then number two and number three. All right, so let's go ahead and check it out. Make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Okay, so I'm going to have my player walk up to the shop to open the menu. We'll go ahead and open up the output so we can see the print statements. I'll try the first one. It says bought item one. The second one says bought item two. And the third one says bought item three. So it seems like everything's working. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and stop here for this video. And what we're going to do in the next one is whenever the player clicks on the buy button, instead of just printing off a message, it's going to actually give the player that item. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and stay tuned for the next one.